You're so I... wise. You're like a miniature Buddha covered in hair. Ah, uh, physical fitness, whatever. You know, whatever. You do what you like to do, I do what I like to do, okay? But you're a sucker. You're getting fed this line about how, like, you're gonna live forever or whatever. You're gonna die. Someone will kill you. Someone will kill you with a knife. Make sure your abs are, uh, friggin' ripped. You got some good guns. You wanna look good for when you get stabbed with a knife. Sorry, that's how it works. A new satanic yoga studio has popped up in New York City, and while many ignorant and paranoid Christians believe that yoga in general is satanic and opens up the practitioners to demonic possession and puts them in communication with demons, this is something totally different. This is actually an overt satanic yoga studio called Monster Cycle and Studio, which has these pictures posted on their Facebook page including signs they're posting around New York City to advertise their new studio with the meme, Hell Yeah! These are actual pictures posted on their official Facebook page. They manufactured a big 11-foot-tall lighted satanic pentagram where the people worship in front of as Satanism is going mainstream. Here's a nice poster for the club that uh, just has a gimp mask on it. Hey, come on down. Let's do some sadomasochism yoga. It's all the, all the rage. They even have this picture posted of Maroon 5's latest music video with Adam Levine, uh, where he's appearing to have sex with dead animal carcasses in the back of a butcher shop while he's covered in blood in the sick, satanic, stalker-themed music video, something I covered in a previous video, a video that was denounced by women's groups who have just obviously pointed out the fact that the video is encouraging stalking and murdering. Just a bizarre, sick, satanic music video that the audience loves. Just go check the ratings from it. Everybody loves it. But hell yeah! The new satanic monster yoga studio with their big satanic pentagram. It's fun! Of course, as I said before, many ignorant and paranoid Christians believe that just yoga in general is, quote, satanic. Even though they've never actually been to a yoga class and don't actually know anybody who has ever done yoga or goes to yoga... And this is largely perpetuated by the pedophile-protecting mafia, the Catholic cult, the Vatican, whose chief exorcist says that it is of the devil. Uh, there was actually a lawsuit here in San Diego where some parents were suing the school, a school for introducing yoga class to the kids, saying that it was going to introduce spiritualism to them and brainwash the children into worshiping Satan. Uh, of course, these people have never been to a yoga class, don't know anything about it. Maybe these people actually should go to a yoga class. They might actually meet a girl and, you know, get off the computer and get themselves a social life. Um, but there you have it. As Satanism continues to be promoted as the new secret to success. This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. John MacArthur, many years ago, he the subject of Christian yoga started to hit a little bit. And John MacArthur, he went on to Larry King, and he took a and he debated a guy named Doug Paget, and that was just a smackdown. And they, there was a little bit of buzz generated from John MacArthur being critical of Christian yoga. Well, it has not been until recently that Christian yoga has again made the news simply because Al Mohler, the president of the Southern Baptist Seminary, he wrote an article saying there's no such thing as Christian yoga. For some reason, it is caught. And article after article after article has been showing up, quoting, uh, quoting not John MacArthur, but Al Mohler saying this high-profile Christian thinks that yoga's bad. I shared with you that the New York Times reported about a new group of Hindus that are trying to get yoga back. They've got a campaign called Take Back Yoga because they think that it has been ripped off by other religions and it is a Hindu practice. Well... We would like to take you back to the days of KKMS, and this could be just horrifying, frankly. But nonetheless, we're going to share this with you. My interview with a fellow named Swami. He was a Swami. How we love him. Param from New Jersey. Remember, this is not a guy who's a Christian. So for those of you who think that Christian yoga is just fine, this is an Indian Swami from New Jersey. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, you have to realize that every word that's used, yoga, mantra, karma, guru, swami, 
etc. These are all Sanskrit terms. And simply look up that word. Sanskrit is defined as the ancient noble language of the Hindus. It is a religious language. So every Sanskrit word that's used is giving credence to the Hindu religion by definition. All right. So if if but just because I'm using a Hindu word, a Sanskrit word, can I in your opinion can I use it without having any Hindu associations connected to it? Not at all. Because that's what it is. Again, all one has to do is simply look up these words. The word yoga, a Sanskrit word, means union of Atman, the individual soul, with Brahma, the greater soul. That is yoga. All right. Now, I'm gonna, let's establish what some of these terms are. Tell everybody what Brahman is. Brahman is a Sanskrit word for the greater soul of love, light, and energy. And it's is, not a being. It's a force of love and light and energy. And what, that is the intent of all the yogas, is for the individual to merge into their atma or soul of love, light, and energy, mm -hmm. and then to become absorbed in the greater soul of love, light, and energy, which we Hindus call Brahman. Again, not a person, a force. Mm -hmm. Do Hindus pray to Brahman? Uh, they do not. Okay. and so the They focus on this force of love, light, and energy. Again, Brahman is not a personal deity. But so the... Hindus have many personal deities which uh, people may not know that when they do a Hatha Yoga, that's the proper terminology, mm -hmm. a Hatha Yoga class, they are focusing on Hindu deities. Hmm. But, uh, but, but I'm just doing it for exercise. Ah, yes, and I'm just doing baptism for right. underwater exercise. Well, okay. communion, wine tasting. Is, would, would I be close to stating that yoga is the, if you will, the means of salvation for the Hindu. It is the, it is the Hindu lifestyle, the various yogas. Mm -hmm. Again, yoga is union of Atman with Brahman. And many yogas achieve that process. Karma yoga, ethics, bhakti yoga, devotion. Hatha yoga, that's the one that everybody's doing, though they don't say hatha. Worshipful postures is what they are. Mm -hmm. Raja yoga, meditation, and jnana yoga, or enlightenment. Did he did he say yani yoga? You know, I think I know what that kind of yoga is. That's that's where you play really saccharine like music, and then you fling your hair over your head like that a bunch of times. I think that's what yani yoga is. All right, but how's about this, Swami Param? How's about if I am doing my hatha yoga to not be connected to not connect my atman to the brahman, but to connect my spirit to Jesus Christ? Uh, it wouldn't work. Why not? Well, because uh, Christianity and Hinduism are totally different religions. But in my mind, there is no Jesus Christ. There's no Jesus Christ in Hinduism or yoga. But I'm in my mind. I'm using it to connect, be closer to my deity. Well, a lot of people do that, but uh, in my opinion, that's a very shallow individual. That's a shallow Christian. Wow. Because. Because they should be adhering to their own Christian principles. Ow. It's wonderful to learn and study Ow. about different religions, and we should do that and respect them. But we cross the line when we start to mix these up. Where you get this is, this is you know how many churches practice yoga? There's a lot of them. They're actually getting a smackdown from a swami from New Jersey. But could I, but can I not learn from a different religious worldview and apply it? I, I, I'm not thinking Brahman. I'm thinking Jesus. Therefore, it's okay. Okay, then pray to Jesus. Do Hail Marys or whatever. But if you're doing yoga, you're doing Hinduism. <laughs> I'm trying here, man. All That's right. respect for the different religious traditions, and we should foster that. And tell every, if you would be so kind, again, the Atman is the individual soul, the Brahman is yes. the force that ultimately you're, you're, you want your Atman to be connected to or become a part of. Exactly. And then explain to everybody, are there any other major um, words that would be beneficial to our mostly Christian audience in understanding Hinduism? Well, guru, that's used all the time. We have Wall Street gurus, we have finance gurus, we have fitness gurus. <laughs> Imagine the outcry if we had Wall Street rabbis, fitness bishops, etc., uh, etc. Et you know what? Guru is a Hindu of a high order teacher. Isn't that funny? And what he's upset about is we've we've taken his words 
his concepts, and we basically hijack them as if, hey, who cares? So first of all, Christian yoga starts out by disrespecting a, a, another religion because we bitch, hey, we can just take it and do whatever we want to do with it. That's that's pretty pretty mm, pretty thoughtless. And it's also thoughtless that we think that we can participate in the salvific activity of another world religion. Because if there is a force in Hinduism, and there is, well, there's only two forces out there that we can't see. There's God, he's the big force, and there's the devil. Those are the only two forces. And if they don't have a deity, and apparently they don't, they're not getting their force from God. And for us to participate in it, means that we are participating with the devil. This is Wretched. Dear higher power guy or, or gal, his name is Jesus.